So good morning. It's a kind of a cloudy day here in Kentucky. The rain's on the way. So I figured it'd be a good day to change the spark plugs in my RV. Uh, these plugs have got 40,000 miles on them. I've been starting to get a, a, a few misfires and I actually got an error code of, of a P0200. So I'm trying to track that down. I believe it's to do with my spark plugs um, because, uh, because of, the, of the misfires I'm getting. But I thought while I had the plugs out, it'd be a good time to do a compression test. Uh, we bought this RV about six years ago. It had 7,000 miles on it when we bought it. Now I'm up past 60,000. And I just thought it'd be a good idea to know, to kind of get a baseline. So at 60,000, I know what my compression is. And as time goes by, I can always refer to it if I have any engine problems. So anyway, of course, like <clears throat> everything else, um, usually if you want to do something, first thing you do is jump on YouTube, see how I'll do it. So in the first video I came across, just showed somebody pulling the fuel pump relay and then proceeding with the compression test. But I thought to myself, well, that doesn't sound right because, you know, because that doesn't eliminate the pressure that's in the fuel rail. Because, you know, if you, th if you think about it, just turn off the fuel pump, like what well, you notice here with this engine, I got the key on, there. you see my fuel pump gauge? That's, uh, I got 55 PSI. And the engine hasn't been started for 24 hours, yet I still got 55 PSI sitting in the fuel rail. So even if I pulled the relay to the fuel pump, and I got all the spark plugs out, as soon as I crank it over, raw fuel is going to be spraying out. The, the spark plug holes so that's not a safe thing and you get one spark and you get a fire and you're really gonna have a bad day so I decided I'd go a step further and go to the repair manual and of course I print out the page and it tells you step by step what to do and it's pretty easy nothing to do about the fuel pump relay at all um, what you want to do is first of all disconnect the uh, the wire harness wires here that goes to the ignition coils you just pull off this little blue connector, lift up that tab, and then unplug. That's all you gotta do. Do the same thing to this side. Get that. And then, and now my neighbor's running a chainsaw. That's great. Okay, and then back here, you got the, okay, you got this last connector. This is connector here, controls all of the um, fuel injectors. So you unplug those three. And now you're ready to start your test. Damn it. Oh, here's a simple little gauge I'm using. And you can see it just screws right into the spark plug hole. You can probably pick these up at Harbor Freight. They're cheap. And let's see if we do this one handed. In here. There's spark plug hole. There we go. Just screw it right in there until it stops. That's done. Alright, I'll tuck the gauge back up top. I can see it. I'll go up there and we'll see what we do. Okay, we're back on top. Now according to the book, you want your accelerator uh, wide open. So put this right there, put your foot to the floor. Crank the engine over and it says you want four puffs. That's exactly what it says. So let's see what, what it cranks up to. Alright, four puffs. And looks like we've got about 185. That's about like all the, all the rest. I've been maybe about a tick low, maybe 184. Um, but you can see yesterday, when I, I did the, the other holes, you see every one I got like 185 on all the, all the cylinders on the right bank. On the left bank I had 190, but one, the rest of them all about the same. So I believe that looks really well, because I'm not using the oil or anything like that. So that's good to know. I, I've got this done, and I'll throw this in my manual for reference later. And then I'll get to changing my spark plugs. Okay, it's spark plug time. But um, I was, was going to show you this. I try to keep up with my stuff. When I first got my RV, I went to the maintenance manual and printed out these pages where it breaks everything down by the miles. Maybe 9,000, 12,000, what you need to do. So I got everything, everything dated, what I did. So I keep up with my maintenance. 
And so, because I was, wasn't certain for certain when I put the plugs in there, but I went back here and looked and I seen 2014, it's now 2018. At 21,000 miles, now I got over 60,000. I put in uh, new plugs, new wires. I got, I got some from Brazzles. Uh, I think they're Taylor wires, maybe. And um, capped them at 45 thousandths per uh, John's advice. And that's been working good. And in fact, amazingly enough, after 40,000 miles, they're still sitting at 45 thousandths. I checked them. I haven't, I haven't, uh, the gap has not grown at all. So um, then they, I even noticed back here in, uh, in 2015, just for curiosity's sake, I, I pulled the plugs just to see how things were looking. And I made a note they looked good. I just put some 10W30 oil on the threads and put them back in. Okay, so, but now we're up to 40,000 miles and they're starting to show some wear. And my cylinder has been misfiring is this plug right here. It'll focus. I don't know if it will or not. Let's get out of this hole. Come on, focus. See all that build up? I'm trying a different background. Okay, it's trying to stay put. You can see it coming and going. There we go. That's a little better. But you see how that's built up? I know several of the plugs are, are doing that. They try to build up. On one side, I don't know why it keeps focusing, keeps coming and going on it. Okay, it's a pretty good spot right there. All right, you see how that build up is? I believe it's arcing off that build up over to the uh, side of the plug here, creating my mess. Because this is a cylinder I'm missing on the worst. And you see there's a lot of build up all around the, the tip. Of the electrode. So I believe that's my problem child. But they're all getting somewhat like that. You see that's got some the same way it gets built up on it. A little bit darker than, than I'd want. But every one of them seems to and to have some build up on one side of the insulator. That one looks pretty good. All the way around. <laughs> but anyway, that's what, after 40,000 miles, that's what I'm looking like, looking at. So, but now here's, now these plugs that I took out were the 41-993. But now we've, evidently it's been updated to a new style plug which is now the 41101. Pretty much looks the same. It's the uh, same of these things. Yeah, the AC Deco, the uh, Iridiums, that's what we got. So, uh, but, but also I want to talk about the uh, anti-siege. Do not use it. They say nothing good, good can come from it, especially on, on these type of plugs. Because they say whenever you see the type of plugs with this coating on it, do, do not use anesthesia. Now, if you have an old plug like this with no coating, they say it's okay to use a drop, but use it sparingly. Because anesthesia can interfere with the grounding of the plug. If you get too much and it gets on the electrode or the, or the insulator, it screws it all, all up and it causes uh, the spark to go crazy. It just causes nothing, nothing but problems. So NGK, AC Deco, all the major plug manufacturers say do not use anesthesia on these plugs. Just, um, Put them in dry, I guess. So, but now, like the last time, I put a drop of a 10 W30 oil on them. But I guess this time, I'll just put them in dry and make sure I get a good ground, all that good stuff. Uh, of course, also using my dielectric grease on the boots. And something about dielectric grease is you only want to put it on the inside of the boot. You do not want to put it on the connector, on the connection itself. Because dielectric grease is an insulator, you know, it's so it's it's designed to keep that current in here and not not run down the insulator and, and, and onto the spark plug. So, and also, of course, it helps you get the um, the boot uh, off later on down the road, so, so it won't be stuck to the uh, to the ceramic of the plug. 
so we'll still use that sparingly, but, but do use it because I put, you know, 40,000 miles ago, I, you can see how the, good the plugs look. I put that uh, dielectric grease on there. I just gave a twist and a pull, and they all came right off with no problem. So, of course, out of the box, I think these will get to maybe 60,000, so I got to carefully bend these down to 45 and get them ready to install. So let's work on that. I also want to mention about torquing of the spark plugs. When I talked about the dielectric grease, I said don't put that on there because that'll screw up the torque. You can over torque your plugs. So, so I'm going to put them in dry, but uh, I am going to torque them up. You know, the factory spec says 15 foot pounds. I've never, 52 years old, I've never torqued a spark plug in my life, but I'm going to torque this, the, these. We'll see how it goes. Got my torque wrench, got that ready to go. And I got my dielectric grease out. And then I got, got my little Q-tip. Remember, you just want to go in here, just get the inside of the boot. You do not want to get it on the end of the connector. You just want to get it on the rubber part so it doesn't stick. Keeps that, keeps the voltage from jumping down and escaping. So I guess the next step is uh, start putting in some spark plugs. Well, I've got all the plugs torqued up now. Just did the last one. <clears throat> I was going to mention this little torque wrench is nice. The rats of a ratchet torque wrench, 3H drive. Because I also have a regular torque wrench. Let me see. That's that style right there. But that's kind of a pain because it's too long and you can't get it positioned very well with the ratchet. You got more options, different angles and stuff. <clears throat> so it works a lot easier. Hard my voice. It's about gone. Um, so got the plugs in, but I also want to mention is the plug wires. Now I put these on in 2014. I bought them from Brazzles RV. If you need any kind of workhorse parts, that's the place to go. They know what's best for your 8.1 or your workhorse chassis. So I put those on in 2014. It's now 2018 and they, they look good. Uh, so check that out because you know, a lot of times we deal with a lot of heat. Uh, these shields rust off. You know, plug wires start burning. It can cause misfires and all kinds of trouble. So check that out. And uh, see what else. Oh yeah, I remember what I was going to tell you. Uh, spark plugs, because this is 2018 and I ran down to AutoZone to get these iridium spark plugs and they was on sale. They got like a $3 rebate, so you get them for $5 a piece after you do the re rebate online. It's pretty quick and easy because these plugs are normally like $7.99 a piece. Uh, so hopefully they'll, these will go for another $40,000. i have seen some people put 100000 on them. But my plugs would not go that far. I don't know why. I feel I do have a enrichment problem somewhere. I just haven't got it solved yet. But we'll keep working on it. When you, when you put your plugs on here, you want to listen. Make sure you get a good click. Can you heard it? Hope you did anyways. That way you know you got it on there good. Now wait. Because that's very important. Good connection. Okay, back on top. Moment of truth. I've got all my connectors plugged back in. Ignition coils are plugged up. Connector to the uh, fuel injector circuit's plugged up. And uh, we'll see if she'll start. Sounds good. You notice I've got a check engine light. And so I'm going to clear the code. Use my scan gauge here. Because normally I'm always monitoring my fuel trims because it's not up to temperature yet. Nothing's happening. But uh, go here, go to scan. Come on, scan. All right, one stored code. There it is, P0200. Let's clear it. Clear code, yes. All right, so it is cleared. Let's engage. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. Well, I got good news and bad news. Of course, the plugs are in. The engine starts and runs. F sounds fine. But, as you can see, I still got a check engine light. I clear it. And start it. It comes right back up. 
And again, it'll probably be the P0200. There it is, P0200. And that is the only code I got. So that means I'm not done. Got the gauge. So anyway, it did new did need new plugs, got that done. So now I gotta do some more research and try to solve this mystery P0200. Guess I'll make for another video. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you bye.